Tom Parkinson was the head of department and he asked me if I'd actually work on that program as a production assistant. And uh, I worked uh, on the first series as an assistant. Then I directed some of the shows in the second series. And I think by the third series, I was actually producing and directing the series of Radio Times. So it actually gave me the discipline. It sort of um, helped me sort of um, become an astute planner, which is something that you have to do to have off-camera rehearsals and all of that sort of stuff. So it helped instill in me a lot of the dis disciplines required in television that most of the work was actually beforehand was the pre-planning. The production part, the recording part, was only the short part. And in some instances, not as exciting as the pre-planning. Well, I'd only been in television just over two years. And uh, this was the first opportunity to actually direct a programme, an hour-long programme, live to air, multi-camera. I think there were around about seven or eight cameras. And so, you know, I was, I was very, very nervous. And at one stage I tried to think of some reason why I could actually pull out. And in fact, I did think that I was going to achieve it because uh, while down in Christchurch rehearsing, my father actually ended up in hospital for some minor um, ailment. And I, I, I said, oh, look, I've got to go back to Auckland, <laughs> you know, to see my father in hospital, hoping that I would get out of, you know, having to direct it. But um, no, I wasn't allowed to. I had to stay there and, um, you know, I pulled it off. And uh, this is something, you know, about live direction, is that you work as a team. You don't do it on your own and you rely on each person's expertise to do their part. And, you know, we went, to, uh, we f went off air an hour later, and of course we had um, Lorraine Downs crowned as Miss Universe New Zealand, who went on to become Miss Universe. Uh, from directing Mastermind, I, I, I sort of learned that um, when you're working on a show that um, has competitors in it, you know, that you actually have to be careful about ensuring each competitor has equal opportunity. And, um, you know, people could challenge. And uh, it was a very simple show to direct, uh, but um, it had drama, it had purpose, met a lot of wonderful people. Peter Sinclair was the host of the programme and uh, I enjoyed working for him. A very, very astute, a very, very bright and intelligent man. There were some wonderful moments and there are moments when I was actually directing and um, I couldn't actually see the monitors in the OB van because I was crying. I was crying because I could see members of the audience crying and also, in one instance, um, one of the artists crying because she was thinking of a treasure of Ngoi Ngoi Pe Whairangi, a lady who was held in high esteem in relation to the promotion and maintenance of Māori language. And so, you know, that, I suppose, to Māori, te hoking on my was one of the uh, most um, empowering programs for myself to have uh, created. The designers came to me and said, well, what do you want for a backdrop, Derek? And I said, well, look, I would actually like this piece here. And I showed them the Tamari book and I said, this piece here. Now, please do not copy it exactly as it is, you know, because it may well, you know, upset um, some people. And uh, so, then I walked into the town hall for the rehearsals and I saw the piece up on the stage and I thought to myself, oh my God, it looks just like the real thing. But what's going to happen? You know, someone from Te Arawa is going to come in and say, what's that doing up there? You know, they've got no right to have that up there. And so I was, during the rehearsals, I, I, was, I was very sort of, you know, scared thinking I would be, you know, criticised and asked to answer why that particular tonga was actually pieced or, or that image of that tonga was used. But a um, message came back, a message did come back, saying, most appropriate that he's up there. And so the show went well. The first 10 or 12 years, I was actually involved in the entertainment department. And by the early 90s, uh, the entertainment department had been devolved. They decided that, you know, an entertainment department wasn't required. We can actually buy programmes from Australia. Um, so I then went into the Māori programmes department. And I was actually given the role of um, producing or creating this program. And so we decided that it should be called Marae and it should be a current affairs show. And um, yeah, that's how it came about. It was, um, 
it was part of the Koha stable. It sort of took the place of Koha. And it was only a half hour, but eventually we, or I developed it into a program, you know, that um, was a must watch for most uh, uh, MPs, Ministers of Parliament. I suppose the program became an adult, or if you like, became um, very important when MMP started in 1996, I think it was. And uh, we um, engaged Digipol to actually do surveys as to um, which Māori would become MPs and uh, which electorates would be taken by various parties. And the poll that we had was uh, pretty accurate and we ended up uh, going to air live after the day of the elections with all the Māori MPs and I think that there was something in the region of, oh I could well be wrong, could be about 16 at the time. Sunday is at 10 o'clock. Who's watching television then, really? Um, when we went to at 8 o'clock on Sundays, we rated much better because, um, you know, people were up and about and having breakfast at that time uh, before they'd actually go out for the day and go and play sports or whatever it was they're going to be doing. But um, I was disappointed that um, the programme schedulers of Television New Zealand never ever gave it a better time slot. I think it really deserved one. Radio Whawaho came out of the stable of Marae. Um, it, I, the whole team was just discussing, you know, that we should try and do something different. And so the idea came about to do this um, sitcom based on a Maori radio station. And uh, about three or four of the reporting team were actors <laughs> edit and uh, yeah we had a wonderful time we had a wonderful time there was some criticism from a certain sector of Māori in the community who felt you know that we were perhaps um, ridiculing the whole uh, institution of Māori radio iwi radio at the time because it had long been in fruition then but no it had a very successful but short uh, sojourn on television it was a Tuesday night in August and I was playing in Dornepol, the new market, and I got this message to say that Dame Tatarangi had passed away. And so I then got hold of TVNZ and Māori Television and um, within 24 hours we had the OB there ready to cover the whole ceremony from the three days that she was there and also then to go to air live on um, TVNZ from about 8.30 in the morning until 2 o'clock in the afternoon. When we came off air at 2 o'clock, uh, the Tupapaku of the Māori Queen was about three quarters of the way to the top of, um, of Topuri Mountain. And I just went out and I saw someone I knew, a lovely friend from Christchurch, and she looked at me and said, oh, Derek, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. And she came and she, hugged me and I just cried. I just cried because, you know, I suppose it was tension, life to wear, and that I felt that I had achieved something worthwhile uh, to the whole of Māoridom, to the whole of New Zealand. And I got feedback saying, you know, some people started watching at Hapa State with the intention of going into work but never ever got to work. And, um, you know, it was just something unique and I shall never forget the occasion and um, yeah, one of the highlights of my career. I would like to express um, the reason why I thought that I had a wonderful uh, profession, wonderful career, and that is because I felt that I was privileged. I was privileged because people gave me their secrets, people gave me their thoughts, they were able to share their skills or willing to share their skills with me. And so I felt privileged that they did that. And I don't, very, very rarely did anyone say no. And that's something in television I think that's precious is that you know, if you are a producer or a director or a reporter, is that never ever forget, you know, that they can say no, they don't have to say yes and give you the information. 
don't think you have that right, you know, to force them to do it. Because you don't have the right. And, you know, be forever grateful. You wouldn't have a television program without the people. And so, you know, I have an adoring respect, you know, for all the people who have appeared on the television programs that I've had the privilege of putting to air on Television New Zealand. Mm -hmm.